Hey everybody, Adam Savage in the tested offices with friend of the channel and veteran of many tested videos, Johnny Fraser Allen. Hey everyone. Uh, Johnny, we have covered so many of Johnny's creative endeavors and they are always like a deep, deep, deep dive into perfect obsession and realization. And this might be the deepest dive yet. Johnny, tell me what this amazing thing is. Um, well, this is actually another sort of full circle tested journey um, <laughs> on my creative path. This came about because um, David, uh, who we're gonna meet, has, like me, his lifelong fascination has been with the greatest film ever made, The Labyrinth. And um, whereas I have been building uh, my scale miniature of Labyrinth because I like tabletop gaming, yeah. David's a pinball nut, so his ultimate uh, reality for the labyrinth was to be to be able to go through it via a pinball machine, and he saw the tested video of us talking about labyrinth. Yeah, and he was um, he wanted to put together his company to build uh, a machine that was really special, and he wanted to find people that loved labyrinth as much as he did. And he saw us talk about some of these sculpts, yes. not these sculpts actually, because these are additional to the ones I made for the labyrinth board game. Um, but these came in really handy while art directing and helping David design uh, this beast here. But um, so I was already very familiar with these these characters. Um, I double sided these sculptures to save on silicon costs. Um, <laughs> but you know the wise man features in, in, in this as well. And um, it was funny because um, a, a week prior to receiving David's email, I was talking with the electrician at Weta about. Should we design and build our own labyrinth pinball machine? And thank God that email. And, and came. you didn't mean forming a company to make a labyrinth pinball machine. You meant just the two of you blokes getting together to spend your money and time making a personal exactly. labyrinth pinball. And it machine. never would have been this good either. And it would have, <laughs> we probably would have sunk like forty grand each and had one machine. And we're like, why did we do that? But um, I, I was going to cover all the art, and he was going to um, help the electronics because he's a bit of a pinball wizard. And so um, you know, thank Henson, I got an email from Dave. It was actually from the Henson company saying, hey, we've got a guy here, um, he wants to know if you want to um, art direct his labyrinth pinball machine. And I just emailed David and said, are we starting today? <laughs> or, you know, I'm your, I'm your guy. And, and so the, the journey was, originally um, I was going to do all of the, um, the sculpting and the art myself. But um, just like David, this project was really important and really personal to me. Out of all the fictional places in the world, whether it's Ankh-Morpork or Gormenghast or Middle Earth, the place I've always wanted to go most is Labyrinth. And it's like, we really could make something that takes you through the Labyrinth. And, and not, not Sarah's journey or a replication of the film, but almost like you're the person that has to solve the labyrinth in 13 hours, which has always been my dream as a kid. It's like when the goblin's gonna come take me away already, you know? But so when, when I started art directing this, uh, at pretty early on, um, even though um, Dave very kindly wanted, like, liked my work and, and the art I'd done on Labyrinth board game, and I mean, I've got a folio of heaps of different styles from working in the film industry yeah, yeah. and personal illustration projects. Yeah. I kind of I thought, um, I would, I, I'd do a pretty good job at this, but I want it to be better than what I can do. And I would rather this machine, I want this machine to be perfect. And I think I'm, an, I think I'm a fine artist, but there's much better artists than me. And I would, rather, I would rather art direct and outsource the work David wants me to do so it really is perfect. So a team rather than just your own mind bringing this thing Yeah, to and life. we did make the A-team for this. So here's, um, here's my art direction. So I, I put this together in, in oh, Photoshop, wow. right? And so this is exactly what the sides look like. But and, and obviously this isn't my best render, but this yeah, is yeah. a render that we can get Henson's to approve it. And then I can art direct a really good artist right, right. to do it. This is a starting and point. So, oh, look at this, this is art. So this is how the, the, the machine yeah, yeah, looks. Yeah. And obviously um, this, is, this isn't just my idea. This is me running, the re mocking up something this rough in Photoshop um, really makes Dave the artist as well um, because he, he, he's able, um, he's able to say, oh, that's great, or move this, or, um, you know, Henson's actually wanted this or something like that. And, um, and so that, that's, this is the very first early mock-up we oh, did for the, for, for the machine. And, um, and you can see, here's, again, this is just some rough Photoshop, but yeah, um, yeah. Here, this is just playing with ideas of what the backing board can be, you know? Wow. And this was an alternative cover yeah, I, yeah. I played with, with River Horse when deciding what, their, what could be on the box of the Labyrinth, and they, the board game, and they didn't go with that. But, so I, I had Labyrinth art just to 
play with in terms of slapping stuff together Photoshop. Yeah, it's yeah. not going to be published or anything, but it's a tool to help me and David decide how great this machine can be. And because of that, I could really, like when we, when David wanted some other options for the backing plate or, you know, um, if, if we didn't use Bowie, what are other options? Right. And so I was able to, to rough up, how do you capture the whole of the labyrinth in one movie? So you have to you have to think about this because you might not get permission to use Bowie's picture. This is when you're embarking yeah. on a project. I mean, it's, it's been a five year journey, and um, you know, there, there's all sorts of. It's not like any. It's not like the Bowie estate or, or Henson's. No one wants to cause trouble for anyone. Right. But licensing things are tricky, and um, things things could change um, a week out yeah. from launch. You know, I don't know. So yeah. um, and so trying to capture Labyrinth in one picture, um, you know, like. Uh, I've I've got every frame of the movie oh uh, screen grabs yeah. and um, high res, you know, and then um, and then I was at, when when it came time to designing some of the the toys as as we call them. Is that what you call these in pinball? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I was able to actually utilize some of the sculpts that I'd hand sculpted, and and I um so I've got these sculpts of Alf and Ralph and the doors, yeah. and so I was about able to photograph those in the right angle. And then you know, and suggest. Oh, nice! And so, so this, this is and this, how you're putting together the aesthetic. Exactly, and then I'm able to um, play around um, with the sculptor here. And then so, when it when it when it came time to just doing the art on the side, yeah. um, I reached out to uh, a friend I'd made on one of my trips to LA, um, called uh, Nate, who is um, he. He designs all of the um, the posters for like Marvel movies, and he actually did the like a lot of the Dark Crystal promotional posters. Oh, amazing! And um, he's kind of like the the current Drew Struzan right, of movie right. posters, and he just he he I, I wanted his level of render, yeah. and then um, I also I wanted because I, I love Photoshop as a tool, but I'm not a, really a fan of Photoshop art. I wouldn't yeah, hang any, yeah, but so yeah. but I was able to art direct um, Nate Hillian, um, which. Basically, you just send an email and say thanks. Tell you know what I mean? go. But he, he was able to capture like a sculptural look, but also a painterly look right. by directly painting over the art direction that I'd handed him. Um, and so, you know, I can step back and look at a, a beautiful version of my art that a better artist has come in and make great, just so the pinball machine can be amazing. And it's the same with the sculpts. Like, I, I, I could have sculpted these things, but I am. Um, this is it's funny. I I was scrolling down a labyrinth fan group. Yeah. I just um, which is I basically only use Facebook for looking at gaming miniatures and labyrinth things, you know. <laughs> and, sure. and and one of the face one of the labyrinth uh, fan groups, um, some Irish guy had posted. He taught himself how to sculpt in ZBrush and had posted his sculpts of yeah. uh, like five different goblins. And I looked at those and it's like. You son of a, you know, it was like, I, 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 <laughs> Begrudging I, I spent 20 years trying to get that good. He's just taught himself ZBrush to do it. And it was as good as a wetter collectible. And so I just messaged him and it's like, do you want a full-time job? Yep. <laughs> and um, and now this this guy works full-time uh, for my my gaming company to make miniatures. Amazing. But, um, but so I developed that relationship with him. And when this came along, it's like, um, so yeah, uh, this, his name's uh, Mike Gilbert. I'm like, Mikey, um, you like Labyrinth, right? He's like, yeah. I was like, how would you like to work on an official Labyrinth project? And you know, and um, you know, like, like me, it was. Um, Where do I start? Like how the, quickly can we begin? The getting getting paid was like a side bonus yeah, right. to being able to work <laughs> yeah. on this at all, you know, and. Um, but and, you know, and, and every time I am finding another artist to work on this, it's. Um, you know, I'm handing them the paycheck I would have got, but that wasn't important to me. The important yeah. thing was making sure that this machine came out yeah. this good. Because it was also like backing backing um, David's vision of like, just, just a guy saying like, I want to make the best pinball machine ever. And, and when he was telling me the amount of stuff he wanted to put in it. Yeah. Uh, and, and this isn't like, Labyrinth is a cult classic. It's not an avatar blockbuster. Right, right, You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and but he, he and, and so like, I mean, it's going to find its audience, but he he's he's making a blockbuster game. Well, can you know? we bring Dave in and talk about Please, after yeah. you've generated all the artwork, the actual practical construction of something like this mystifies me. Let's bring yeah, Dave sure. in. Well, since you guys was looking at the alternative back glass, so there is the alternative. Whoa! Back glass. And so, and tell us about this artist. So this is Johnny Crap. 
he has done pinball machines before. In fact, he did Jurassic Park uh, for Stern. The, the Redux, right? Yeah, the, re, re, uh, the new version. Oh so basically, it's kind of funny. In the company itself, you have people that love Labyrinth really bad, but yeah. they love David Bowie. But if you go to pinball people, they love this back glass because this represents your journey into right, the labyrinth. Right, right. You're good guys, you're versing the bad guys, and your trip to you know the Goblin City. That is amazing. So, and, and working with Johnny, it was it was important um, to have an artist who kept because pinball fields have a real pinball look. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and there's I, an I'm aesthetic. a painterly or sculptorly sort of artist, and I I. I I, I was actually looking forward to doing the 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 plate, but it's so technical, and and um, I didn't want to kind of mess it up. Basically, I was second guessing myself. But what I did do is this is a print of it, but I print. I got a piece of paper the size of the playing field, oh, right. and so I did a I did a rough drawing just in pencil, and I wanted to capture like ha Look at this. all this of is, these all of these oh beepy yeah, floppy yeah, bling yeah, things. Yeah. Right, they were already in place. So I printed those out where they needed to be wow. and drawing around those circles and where the lights needed to go, I tried to capture the Labyrinth movie in one playing field in, in relative scale to the silver yeah, ball that's yeah, running yeah, around. Yeah. So it did feel like you were moving your ball and, and sending it through and playing it around the, the physical space of the Labyrinth. You know what I love about you, Johnny, as an artist is like a lot of times an artist accomplished in one field drifts into another or steps into another and gets their hat handed to them because they, they don't know that, or they're, they haven't remembered that every different discipline or different field has different rules and different, not even rules, but more like aesthetic guidelines. Yeah. And I really appreciate you talking about pinball as its own aesthetic that you're bringing your thing to rather than I'm just gonna make a Johnny Fraser Allen pinball machine. Well, and what people Thanks. don't understand is like, you got the cabinet art, which is really a traditional piece of art. Yeah. But when it comes to the play field, so the whole concept behind the play field is it has to be the world. It has to be a bird's eye view going right, into right, that world. Right. So that's why you transition from the owl perception of here looking over the player, then transition into your 3D oh, it's, world okay, here. So it's, it's, very it's, it's very lane and in. But when it comes to the play field, it's just not art. And this is something, you know, I've had to deal with all different types of artists when it comes to the play field. It's really a piece of UI. Yeah. It's all giving you the direction of where you're going. So like this path, for example, the bridge is showing you the ball path of where you need to shoot. Right. So right. everything has a particular line of what tells you where you're you're going to shoot the ball and give you direction of where you're going to shoot to. So everything is laid in basically guiding you of what you're going to do. For a good example, a part of this game is, again, when I designed this game, this wasn't about Sarah's journey. This is me, the child, wanting to make the our choices. I want to go up instead of down. So when the your hands choose your own adventure. You choose your path in this. Amazing. This is your journey in this world, yeah. you know? And so for a good example, a part of going into this adventure, you have to become friends with Ludo, Hoggle, and Sir Didymus. So if you see the color rings around your friends, yeah. so when you're looking for them, you'll actually see those colors on the inserts. So when you shoot them, you're collecting their items to become your, your friends, and they give you awards as you collect them as you go towards the Goblin City. Can you tell me about this screen in the back? That is not something I have seen in the pinball. Is that, is that new? Uh, well, they've done versions of it. You had Pinball 2000 where it had a hologram over the top half of the play field. Oh, okay. And there was back in uh, Circus Voltaire had a, a dot matrix display. Instead yeah. of having it here, they had it down on the play field. But the whole point of having an LCD back there was to continue on the vista of the world. It's really And it, it really is there to help you immerse you that this is the world that you're journeying into. And you're in a mode, instead of having to look up to the rules here, we actually put the rules, you get little banners popping up telling you what you have to do next. Amazing. And we'll have, you know, there's going to be little characters that go back and forth and stuff like that on that. And it's all about immersion. We want you to be a part of this world. Now I noticed, uh, we, we, we put this up last night and we got it running mm -hmm. and we each took a turn and I noticed that a lot of the characters show up whether or not you unlock them. Like as yes. this, throughout the course of one person playing, you do get to see a lot of the little secret characters. Well, I mean, if you end up in the forest, of course you're gonna get the fireys popping up. <laughs> They're gonna come after you, you know? Yeah, yeah. And when you shoot Elo where Elo is, what William is actually his name, he pops up and he says hello to you. You know, and it's just one of those things of, those are things, again, I want to have a cup of tea with the missus, yeah, you know? Yeah, so you'll yeah. have the opportunity to do that in this game. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all about, you know, the wise man falling asleep, but he will send you on quests that have nothing to do with the game. He's just telling you, he's like, 
just go and shoot the ramp five times and yeah. it will give you actual bonuses. But again, like the wise man, he was never helpful, you know, but he's just, he's I thought his advice was, was pretty good. I still use it on a daily basis. <laughs> is, is, there a, is there a feature that you knew you wanted in the beginning that was really hard to make work? The whole thing. All the <laughs> I mean, when you, again, it's like when we sat down to design this, we approached it not as just watching the film and what can we put, mm -hmm. it's what are memories of it? What's yeah, the nostalgia? Yeah. What we do we mm. take from it as a person? You know, and that was finding the core elements that made us love this IP in the first place. Well, you said that before when you're saying like a lot of, um, uh, a lot of um, playing fields uh, are kind of flavorful and representative of the film, but not the film itself. Like even, I mean, my, again, my point of reference was my Jurassic Park pinball yeah, machine, yeah. which I feel is a work of art. But the what you're looking at is a map of Isla Nubla, uh, and there's a picture of Nedry here and Ian Malcolm over there sort of right, thing. Right. And it's great, I, no complaints from yeah. me, but like um, for this, um, we we wanted to, like we said, capture being in the labyrinth, but at the same time, that movie is so rich and the labyrinth is so massive and every 10 minutes of that movie is a completely different location that could sustain an hour and a half movie right. in itself. Yeah, yeah. And, and we've got like a meter to, um, yeah, to, to tell all to of that illustrate story. That. And so, um, so when, um, it, so waiting um, for David to, finalize the playing field was important for me because like I said, I wanted to draw around all the blitz and shits, but also knowing the ball went up this way, yeah. it's like, well, um, there's these massive walls that divide the different sections of labyrinth. Right. And so I go, well, that could, I, I could work a wall in there and yeah. um, are the balls supposed to go this way? Okay, so I'm gonna need two tunnels there. And um, also like how much hedge maids should there be versus how much masonry maids? And and then that was also, the, the, the difficulty was, um, um, making the hedge maze work up around here when Goblin City was here. It's so, so close, 100%. Um, but it works. You know, my favourite thing of the whole pinball machine, I think, is how, and, and this is this is mainly you, is the um, the bizarre forced perspective of Goblin Town going right back into the castle. Yeah. And just um, especially when you're standing here playing it, I, I that, totally and agree. the nipper stick. That, this oh is, yeah, sorry. This I've got nothing plunger, to do with this. This is you know this only totally labyrinth, amazing. It feels crazy. <laughs> the only the labyrinth fans love this. Anyone who doesn't know what it is, they're like, that is disgusting. Is Why disgusting. is that on the game? <laughs> um, I want to go. Uh, this is obviously a deep dive, and I want to go one level deeper. Can we see the underside? Can Absolutely. Can we see the insides of this? Absolutely. I love this view. I can't believe this. <laughs> wow. So like on all of this, like you asked what was the hardest part and yeah. it's like, it was really important us to have diverters. So when you would shoot a shot, it can change. It can so, shoot, it can so go you, in one of different, several yeah, different So parts. you, the player can change the path of what you're going on, oh. but also the Goblin King, if you're doing too well, yeah. can change it on you as well. So there was things like the diverter right here. So I don't want to touch too much because it's on, because there's sure, sure, 48 sure. volts in yeah. here. So you've got like the diverter mech. So this diverter mech sits behind the wise men and where the doors are. So mm -hmm. if you shoot left or right, you can choose shoot the left door or the right door. But if you haven't got to that section of the maze, it actually just horseshoes right back to the player. So it's little things like how can we manipulate the gameplay yeah. to make you feel like you're really in a labyrinth? So you've got a fork mechanism over here that catches the ball. So that represents the fiery. So they capture you and yeah. you've got to yeah. rip their heads off for jackpots to escape them. But it also represents the humongous gate. So when you get trapped in there, you've got to rescue your your friends from that point. But I mean, we've I mean, there's not much we don't have in here. We have you know three flippers. We have two magnets back and forth. Uh, we have three slingshots, um, and it's all just you know run by electrical mayhem. And am I noticing these are these parts look actually three D printed? Yes, and they're production parts, and that's yes. that's that's amazing. I love that that's coming in. I figure all the metal is laser cut or yep. water cut. Laser and... cut. Yep. Dave, I see a couple of integrated circuit boards, but I'm assuming the full brains of this are The brains else. is all back there. Can we look in there? Absolutely. I just love how serviceable you've made it. 
Yeah, I mean, actually, that was one of the key things is typically when you go in a back box, you have LEDs facing out because that lights up the light box. Yeah, yeah. So when our mechanical and engineer working on this, we were sticking them all over the place because a building a pinball machine is very much prototype, stick it in, see how it works and right, so right. forth. And then we found out if we laid the LEDs flat, it actually lit up the whole back box, <laughs> the exact same way we wanted to do right, the back right, box, yeah. but now it's serviceable. You don't have to turn off the high power or anything like that. So yeah, I mean, that's essentially, this is the brains. You got your high power coming in and your 12 volt comes into right. the power filter board. Then that spreads out to the brains of the computer. Of oh, This is what drives the uh, solenoids and switches down mm -hmm. here. This is where all the game code and graphics and audio come from. Because mechanically, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, amperage involved. You're moving physical things a whole bunch in this. Yes, there's a I, lot of a lot of power requirements. Absolutely, and I've been zapped, you know, for my years. <laughs> Not this game, but yeah, yeah. you know, it's one of those things when you start learning to work on pinball machines. I was 15 when I started working on my first pinball machine. It was a Dattery Star Wars, and I didn't know what I was doing. I just opened it up, left it on, and went, put my finger in it, and yep, I didn't do that again. But so the difference between that and this very modular almost consumer purchasable set of ingredients, right? Like it's, it, it must be so much easier today to, to design something like this. Well, so a lot of the, the boards, for example, are more modulated. So back in the day, it would be like one giant board right, and a separate right. board with a power supply down in the back box and that would come up to here and then feed back out to there. So right now, Pinball has gone to more of a modular stage. So yeah. you have all the brains up here, then now we'll send it down to other circle boards under the play field, and then send it out to other little boards that populate it. So when you're diagnosing, it's really much more straightforward because if one goes, you know it's gonna be just this area here, so you can pinpoint it much quicker than before, you would have to find which chord it is and stuff like that. So, and we do have one more surprise for you. You have one more surprise. Yes, but. <laughs> doesn't. Oh. <gasps> So this. No, it doesn't. It does. No. So we have to take the back glass off, but that's just how it is. We'll oh my it. God, I was, it is so amazing that you did this because when you showed the artwork with the heads on top, yeah, I was like, so this oh. Is, um, I, that's the art direction. And then, so this was the final yes, machine. So I caught a view of this I earlier and I was like, I'm really sad those guys aren't there. Well, so this was the thing that I was like, I love you, Dave, but you never like this is going to be amazing. But you're never going to pull this off. <laughs> and then, I, I mean, this is the first time I'm seeing it in person, like with you, because he's kept it in the box. But um, oh my god, yeah, they are just so nailed so, it. And the nailed person, it. and the person that dealt with this the most is Brian. Brian, why don't you come in here and you talk about that while I get this installed? <laughs> so these are Mikey, Mikey scopes as well. Oh, gorgeous! So this took a long time to produce. Yeah, since I had worked with toys in the past. Right, um, right. We worked on this. Is actually, materials that we haven't used, I haven't used before. Most of used injection yeah. and stuff, but this is all roto molded, so it's a lot more durable. Oh, okay. Pinball. But one of the problems you had here, and these actually are articulated. I'll show you in a minute. They go back and forth. They don't. Um, yeah. So the, the, the hair, the hair was a problem. Yeah. Really? You're going like, well, sculpted hair? No, it doesn't look like. Okay, rooted hair. All right, do we do a wig? I pitched sculpted hair because I thought you'd never be able to pull yeah, off a well, wig. Well, and, and we had wigs made and from a wig maker, and they go, no, that won't work. They, we, we want to do rooted hair is what China And that's like what the, the, the baby so, dolls yeah, they, have, yeah, right? And all, so we go, great, all right. So the problem you have is they start sending samples of hair. This is very <laughs> friendly looking. <laughs> it, isn't she not? This is a yeah. particular hair fabric, okay? Okay, but got it. But the problem you have is that mostly in they're making fashion dolls. Right. So they want to make the hair look slick and pretty, you know, like mine is today. Oh. <laughs> yeah, really, really beautiful, long locks. <laughs> so, but anyway, so when you tell them, no, I, I need it to look worse. I need it right. to be scraggly, scraggly, make it look worse. Oh, they, they don't really, know how to do that. No, and so they also, you know, hang on, hang yeah. on. Go. So then we had hair color. So this is Carrot Top, <laughs> Carrot Top Snarf. Oh my God! Okay. You know you have to send this to Carrot Top. Yeah, yeah and this is <laughs> this is Beetle's Froggy here. Oh my God, yeah, that's you know. great! I want so to you steal your four. baby. Yeah, so you got to pick. You can see I that it has know. some different color in it, which was a struggle to get it to lay out. Right. Um, because you don't want globs of color in this. You want it to be, you know, just like the puppets look. You want yeah, it to be yeah. scraggly and have the different colors. People don't realize in hair how many different color combinations actually are on a head. On a single head, right, yes. Right, right. Yeah. So this was, but these were different styles they sent us and we said, I don't think so. That's a that's a little too curly for that's me. That's a little there. too curly? Yeah. This so, is incredible. This should pop out so when you finally reach Then we Toby. had to cut the hair and, you know, it's just it was a struggle. But, uh, but it was well worth it. But this, I started this three years, four years ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, four years ago is where we first started the concept of getting quotes and like, how are we going to build these? And it's that and length of time. Make them? Well, it's just, you're to, making things that I've never made. You're making right, things right, that nobody right. else has ever made. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's no knowledge. You're just going like, well, will this work? So you have to find willing partners right. willing to burn new pathways. Right, and we actually have uh, one of the people that helps us on this is a engineer that works at NASA. And oh, so <laughs> he's drawing us stuff. We're going, no, 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 less parts, less parts, you know, simplify oh, it. I really want to see the machine that does this. Uh, it would be interesting. I, I've not <laughs> seen that either, but it's like, okay, poke it in the, you know, mm. poke it in the head there. So that it's all is... you can see. Brian, that's just So amazing. they struggled a lot, but we got it. We got it to this, and well, we you, think they look great. Dude, so these guys are watching over you while you play. And, and they also talk to you. No. Yeah, yeah so that two outsiders will turn in and confer. Or, what? Or discuss oh, your that... playability. Can we see? Three flippers, three balls, three goblins will take them all. Oh, my God. <laughs> and their eyes light up when they talk. Wow. Yeah. So the whole idea is, you know, in the beginning of the movie, you know, they're in the closet waiting. Yeah. So when you actually start a game on this, you they're actually if you just let the ball sit there, they'll start chatting away, and the goblins will also come up on the screens like, are they going to plunge the ball? Oh my god! Are they going to plunge it? No, they're not going to plunge. It. <laughs> you know? I I feel like like Alan Grant taking off his sunglasses at the Brachiosaurus. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you did it. Uh, my God, Dave, Brian, Johnny, this is such an amazing achievement. You guys, congratulations. No, thank you. Thank uh, you, sir. We yeah, will spend way too much time playing this here. Absolutely. Yeah. I thank you so much. And what an achievement, guys. It's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking forward you. to getting Thanks. some more games in. I can't thank you enough for supporting us by watching the channel. If you've been to our merch store, you might want to head there again because we are always updating our roster with new products. Here is the anime-inspired Tested logo in Japanese, my, one of my all-time favorite new designs. Uh, we're also selling Tested mugs and Tested hats. Oh, and if you want a cup of tea, we're selling that too. Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com.